In the previous example, we saw that the velocity shows how position changes with time. And velocity was 3 meters per second because my R position changed by 3 meters every second. So I keep the motion diagram here. We had this arrow showing the displacement. And um, the velocity is an arrow that has the same direction. It's a vector quantity, has the same direction with the displacement always, and is found, the definition we said will be found, displacement over change in time, slope, rise over run, the same thing. Now, again, if we use that in the table, the position of the velocity is in between, and it shows how position we set changes, right? It is easy to understand from the position table, um, from the position column, how the, what the velocity is every time. And of course, we can use it the opposite way. If I know the velocity, I will be able to find how position changes with time. Now, if I want to do um, the graph of how, what velo how velocity is with time, a velocity time graph, in our example, velocity stays the same. It is 3 meters per second the whole time, the whole 2 seconds. What we can do now is we can see how much the area under the velocity time graph is for every second. What is this area? This area is a rectangle and we can find it base times height. This is the base. It's one second. This is the height. It's three meters per second. We never forget the units. So the area between the graph and the time axis, under the graph, as we say, is three meters per second times one second, and it is three meters. What we can see is that what I found with the, the area is actually the displacement that happened at that second. If I find the area under the graph for the next second, I will find the displacement for that second, which is another three meters. And of course, if I decided to find the displacement for the first two seconds, I would find a total of six meters, right? And so I see that the area under the graph gives me the displacement, how position changed with time. 